Well, good evening or good afternoon or good morning to everyone, depending where you're at in the world. I'm Zarathustra and welcome to our online global self-awakening workshop. This is day two. I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And yesterday we talked about free will is an illusion. And so today I want to elaborate more on this and uh, give you a broader perspective and explain things more in detail so it makes more sense to, to you what I'm talking about. The Excuse me one moment. You're muting everyone. All right, great. So, all right. So let's talk about a couple of different things first and kind of explaining what I mean by that and how it works and how you can tune into this and shift your consciousness. The, when we're born, pretty much the first two years, we're not identified with the person. We're not identified with the uh, imaginary person that we believe that we are. So around age two, what happens is identification takes place. That uh, the child begins to really identify with their body and their mind. And that's what they call, they call it the terrible two. Uh, around two, two and a half years old, this identification happens and the child becomes a separate entity. And, uh, and that's where it starts like grabbing the toys and it's cat, grab a toy from another child and says, no, it's mine. And even though they may not be interested in having that toy, but uh, they become possessive of things. That's because a shift has happened from completely not being identified to um, completely being God and totally just being a part of the oneness. And then their consciousness merges into an identification of an ego-based person and the sense of separation kicks in. So that's what happens around that age. As we move on our, through our experiences and also through our five senses, it's fortifying the idea that you are someone, a person separated from everything else. And therefore, you got your own free will and you can make your own decisions, what to do, where to go, what to say. And as a result of that, when you're making a mistake or you're committing uh, an act, uh, whether it's a crime or you did something wrong or whatever, you have to pay consequences. Same as when you're accomplishing something that we call it good, then you're being encouraged. So, and this continues and keeps going. Everything else around you and your surrounding, including the society, is going to support this idea, support that you are a person capable of your own decisions and you have your own free will. And as a result of your free will, your whatever you, your actions, you're responsible for the consequences of your own actions, whether they're positive or negative. So basically you have no reason to doubt this and you never question it, never ever question this until you get on the spiritual path. And maybe if you're lucky, you come across this information, which is very, very rare because most majority of the information out there is not about this. And 
and very, very few teachers have come on this path where they've got the bullocks to talk about this. And because it takes a lot of courage to come out here and to tell you that you don't have free will on a pseudo spirituality time that 99% of the schools of spiritualities are fortifying that you have the power and you're the author of your own life. You're writing the script and you're the one who chooses what to do. And all these different schools are really encouraging you to go on that path. So all of a sudden somebody comes and says, that's all nonsense and it doesn't exist. So <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a big thing to say in face of a world global movement that is really uh, supporting the idea that you as an individual have the power and you can write your own script and what to do and what to accomplish and blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> so in my opinion and my experience, my direct experience is I was lucky when I came across this information and it did resonate with me. It doesn't resonate with a lot of people. In Advaita Vedanta teachings and any sort of teachings that is talking about merging your consciousness to fifth dimension and is talking about and, and encouraging you to look into this path, to pay attention to this idea, to be open on this concept or idea or way of thinking or seeing things, that there is no individual and there is no free will and you're choiceless on this path and inviting you on this, on this way. It's not something which is very attractive. The majority of the herd in spiritual arena are not interested in this. So this doesn't really sell well. So it's not a good marketing teachings because most people are not interested in buying it. They're interested in what is telling you that an individual, you can empower yourself and you can get whatever you want. So which that teaching is about fortifying your individual sense of separation. So it's the opposite. And of course, as you can see today around the world, it's got a massive market. Most people are very attracted to that. And very little people are attracted to this teachings. So we're here together. And obviously you have come in this direction or you're interested in hearing what I have to say. Not necessarily you may agree with it, but something inside you has triggered you and something inside you keeps bringing you back or you're curious or whatever, or you're checking it out. Now, I have no desire and no intention of convincing you of what I'm sharing with you. So, I want to make this very clear because I never try to convince anyone to look at things the way I look at it and I see it. Everything I see and I have come to understand, it was as a result of a direct experience. It's something I'm experiencing daily, moment to moment. My teachers did direct me in this way and they pointed out, but I had to come to this realization on my own. It's otherwise it's not worth it and it's fake. And something I discovered on this path is you can't really fake it. You can fake it for a short period of time, but it's gonna come out. It will surface eventually. 
So, but when you experience it directly, it's your direct experience, then there is tremendous power behind it. There's a lot of power against behind when you're teaching something that is coming from your direct experience. Don't move around too much. Now, why, so when you start to shift your consciousness, this is a shift, this is sort of an ascension from a third dimensional way of thinking, a third dimensional way of being that you've been trained to look at things from that way is now your consciousness is shifting. There's a shift happening here that you're looking and you're believing of one way of seeing it. This is the tunnel of your reality. You're looking at things from this tunnel of reality. And all of your life, you've been looking at it from that way. And all of a sudden, suddenly something happens, whatever it is, whether it's a shock treatment, um, an accident happened, you had a tragic situation, you lost somebody, you have had a car accident, um, you lost financially, you lost someone very close to you. Um, something shifts, whatever it is, or you had a tremendous uh, an incredible shift in your spiritual practice. And then your consciousness brought, it widens. And all of a sudden you start to, whether you met somebody, you read a book, you sat with a teacher, whatever is the situation, you came to the academy, whatever it is. There's a number of different things can happen. And all of a sudden something shifted and an opening happens and you're open to these teachings. And in that opening, you widen your perspective and you start to look at it differently. And something inside you says, yes. And you say, you know what? Why don't I give this a try? and see what happens. What do I have to lose that I'm not gonna lose anyway? I've tried this all of my life and this is where I am and I'm still suffering. I'm still afraid. I'm still really in fear and anxiety of the unknown. And especially right now with what has happened it's a perfect scenario, perfect recipe for this. So everything I believed I know, and I did, I'm a good person. I paid my taxes. I didn't cheat on my family. I didn't cheat on the government. I'm a vegan. I'm vegetarian. I practice my I wake up at five in the morning and I do my pujas and I meditate and and do everything right. And all of a sudden, the rug is pulled under my feet and my world is crashing. i am lost my business. I'm losing a lot of money. Maybe my partner left me. Blah, 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 blah. A number of different things happening. And the world that you have constructed or it's been constructed around you, all of a sudden, you start to realize it was built on the sand and now it's crashing down and, and it's being destroyed. And something is triggered inside you because all the stuff that you have studied and you've invested into is none of them are helping you. None of them are saving your world. And you're just wondering what the hell is going on. 
what's up with this one? What's happening? I thought I'm the author of my own life. I thought I can create, you know, me, I'm powerful. I can create things, but no matter how hard I've been trying, everything is falling apart. And now with this pandemic, we're forced to stay home. Right now it opened up a little bit, but it will come back according to what they're telling us. So why is this happening? Now we're going to go back in our cells again. It's like prison cells for another six months or seven months. Why is that happening? What's going on? What's going to happen to the world? What's going to happen to the economy of the world? What's going to happen to me, basically, me? That's the question. What's going to happen to me? Excuse me, is this closed? That door, I don't think, is completely closed. Oh, that the router's outside. Okay. So, <clears throat> what's going to happen to me? Me means the I, the I thought. Me as an individual separated from the world, what's going to happen to this guy, to this girl, me? The I, the I thought, the person, this person who's separated from the whole. What's going to happen to her, to him? It's very, very frightening. Very, very frightening situation to be in. And that's the question we're all asking. Everybody's asking, what's going to happen to me, to my world, to this world? But all is related to me. It all comes back to this person. So let's take a deep breath for a moment and just sit with this. What's going to happen to me? Why is everything like this? Is this the end of the world or is this the end of me? What's coming to an end? Whose foundation is really being shaken? Who is being really challenged right now? It's my world. The world that it appears to be real. It's the reality that seem like to be real. It's being challenged and it seems like getting rocked. And it's changing very quickly. The world as I knew it is changing to something else. What used to be normal is disappeared and a new normal is taking over.
Well, the me has a hardcore and major investment into a world that is not real. This world that we're living in and we're in interaction with it on every moment basis has no substance. It's not real. And because it's not real, it can't continue holding its structural integrity. It cannot remain the same. It's continuously changing from one thing to another thing. So we're trying to hang on to it. And sometimes it appears like it's continue being the same for a short period of time, but then it changes from one thing to another thing. It's very clear, just look at the history. And it also, you recognize it strongly, stronger if you have lived in a country or a region which war happened to be there and everything was normal. You had your country, you have your region, you had your city, and then the war came. And all of a sudden, your reality is rocked. And your city or your country is in ruins because it's been bombed or overrun by another army or whatever. Businesses are destroyed, wealth are gone, people are killed, some people are raped, some people are dismembered, and your reality is changed permanently. Now that could be war. What about natural disasters? Like there is volcano or there is hurricane or there is earthquake. And what was your reality is destroyed and it's a different reality now. Now those of you who lived in those kind of regions that either was hit by a natural disaster or war came of a revolution came in this lifetime. So you know that your reality can change from one thing to another. These are different levels I'm talking about. Let's say, or you lost your business. You were very wealthy, you were doing very good or your family was doing very good. And then something happened a number of different decisions were made and your family lost their wealth. And you went from being the top of the world to the bottom of the world. From being very well off, you went to poverty. Some of you may have experienced that you're flying high in April and you're shot down in May. You're doing really well physically Everything's going your way. You can't do anything wrong. Everything is going your way. And then all of a sudden you're diagnosed with some kind of terminal illness. And they give you three months to live. Or you go on an operating table and they start taking, cutting out your body parts. And you lose your abilities. You can't do the things you used to do. You're on medication. You're dis dismembered. You're disabled. And your world changed. Or maybe you were in an amazing relationship with somebody and something happened to them. They got in a car accident or they died or they left you. And your reality changed. We're trying to hang on to this world, to our reality, to whatever we're experiencing. We keep thinking it's real and we're really invested in it and we're trying to keep it the same, but it doesn't remain the same. It's always changing from one thing to another. If you 
lived in Southeast Asia and you lived in Vietnam 30 years ago, you would, you would be in a war-driven area. But now it's peaceful. If you were in Europe in 1940s, in 1935, everything is peaceful relatively and nothing's going on. And all of a sudden, by 1939, war comes and the whole continent was destroyed. If you lived in 1920s in Europe, or you go back, just keep going back and forth. You know, different regions, if you lived in, let's say, Syria or Iraq in 1990 or 1995 or 2000 or Afghanistan or Libya or in Iran or in Africa in some places or South America. So when the war came or even in Europe, in Bosnia, so your reality all of a sudden changes. You lose friends, family, possessions, your business. And now worldwide, this thing is happening. This pandemic thing is happening. Who in the right mind ever thought in January of 2020 that all of a sudden the world will go upside down? Who thought about that? I mean, so many people, so many companies were really heavily investing into real estate or, comp or other companies or whatever they were doing. And all of a sudden, they all went upside down. Look how many businesses have gone, whether locally or, or internationally or nationally, and they've gone bankrupt. So you can, now we're in this situation, we can see how things are changing and the reality we're hanging on to is shifting from one thing to another. So who's behind it? Why is this happening? What's the purpose of this? Why are we experiencing this? Why is our world is being rocked? Who's behind this? Is there a malice intention? There's different levels to it, but on the very, very highest level, at the ultimate truth, we do have the ultimate truth, the ultimate reality, and we have the relative reality. In the relative reality, there is a you and me and everyone else appears to have their own free will, appear to have their own, they can do whatever they think they can do, and we're acting accordingly. In the ultimate reality, there's only one. There's one intelligence choosing for everyone and everything, and is operating the entire existence. And there's never been a second one in it involved. It's only the appearance, what appears to be the other. It looks like the other people. It looks like there's other things, but they're all a part of that one. They're all images, fingerprints, images, the expressions of the oneness, the expressions of the absolute. There's only one. It's like a disco ball. You have a disco ball, and if you look at it, the disco ball starts to turn, and a lot of times they're projecting light to it, or it's got its own light, it doesn't matter. And it's shooting out all these images across the, the room, the hall that the disco ball is in, in a nightclub or wherever, and it's turning, and all these images that it's projecting, they're turning with this turn of the disco ball. The images, imagine that you're one of these images and you have this sense that you're making your own decision. You're, wherever you're moving to is what you have chosen to go to. But you you're, don't exist. 
you're only an image of the disco ball. The light is shining to the disco ball and then these images starting to appear on the wall. But if this disco ball, if somebody turns off the switch, means no more electricity going to it, and then the ball stops, it's not moving around anymore, what happens to the images? The images disappear. There is no more images. Now imagine you're one of those images. You think you're making your own decisions, you think you're doing your own thing, but you don't even exist. Non-existing. It's only an image. That's all there is. That image is doesn't have its own power source. It doesn't, it's not an entity that is running on its own. It is a reflection of the disco ball. It just does not exist. It's illusion. And that's what is happening here. When we're talking about awakening, self-awakening, self-realization, to awaken to the truth of who we are is to wake up to the illusion you're living in. Wake up to this image that you think that you are. Waking up from that one to the truth of who you are. Of realizing that you're not this expression that has its own independence. You are an expression of the very source but you don't have your own independence. You're being drowned. You're in someone else's dream. Someone is dreaming you, which we call it God. God is dreaming you. You're not dreaming it, you're being dreamt. So now you're kind of start to open yourself up to this and you're waking up and then the question comes that then why is the world like this why would god dream this world why would god create this world why in this world we have to have wars we have to have children being born uh disabled and disadvantaged why in Ethiopia millions of people had to go through starvation and have such a horrible life? Why there is human trafficking? Why there is rape? Why there is all these different things? Why do they exist? Why would God create such a ruthless life? What's the point of it? Well, it's also created a lot of beauty too. There's a lot of good stuff, beautiful stuff, and there's a lot of ugly stuff. They're all simultaneously existing in this plane of consciousness. Simultaneously, you have both of them. You have the good, you have the bad. You got the the light, you have the darkness. You have the white, you have black. All of them are here simultaneously. So why? Well, let me ask you this question. Let me put you in a position of the infinite. Infinite, pay attention, infinite. You're infinity. You're unlimited. You are everything, you're everywhere. And it's only one, so it's only you. And millions of years go by and you're yourself and you're in this position of absolute silence and nothing is going on. It's just the being. It's completely empty, it's completely silent, it's completely still. And millions of millions of years go by and there's a moment that you get bored and you say, okay, I'm bored of being the infinite. 
and I want to try something. What do I look like? Because I have nothing to compare myself to. I just am. And I've been here ever since the ever since. So I want to see myself. Let me have a mirror. What do I look like? So you create duality. You have something that you can look at yourself. Ah, oh, I'm interesting. What else can I be? Well, let me create more of myself. Oh, wow, okay, I see this dude. He's got brown hair with a little bit of blonde in it. And well, let me create another one that has a smaller nose and let me create one that has blue eyes and let me create one that has black skin with an Afro and let me create one that is super white and let me create one that his eyes are Asian, you know. Let me just keep creating different ones. Ha, huh, wow, that's interesting. I like, I like what I'm creating. So let me create different patterns. So for a number of years, you're creating all these angels and everyone's lovey-dovey and everything is nice and everything is just Christ consciousness and Mother Teresa and everyone's very kind to everybody and you live that for a few million years and then you get bored of that. You say, you know what, I'm tired of this. I want some action. So why don't I create Chanky's Khan? Why don't I create a mean, badass ninja warrior who wants to conquer the world or go conquer other countries and, and gets into actions and starts killing? Oh, that's really fun. I like war and action. So now it creates that. So it creates this badass army that is about to go on a rampage and taking over other countries and taking slaves and killing and raping. And, but who is killing who and who is raping who? It's the same one that is creating this badass army is going after this other nation. So... The source is playing both sides. Here is the aggressor and it's attacking this nation. But it's also this one too. It's both of them. The source is playing both sides simultaneously. At one place, why? Because it's infinite. It can be anything at once at any moment and experience all these different things. So in this part is playing, being the aggressor and aggressive and attacking. And this part is being the one which is being attacked. So here is about to conquer, here is about to be conquered. So in one place is experiencing fear, anxiety and desperation. On the other part is experiencing taking over and the excitement of killing or raping or, or dominating. It's experiencing both sides simultaneously because it can. Simply because it can do it. And it's imagining, it's its own imaginations. So nothing's really happened at the end of the day. It's happening, it's in own imaginations. So it's in own imagination, 100,000 people attack this other nation and they kill everybody. But it happened in the imagination. It never happened in reality. Nobody ever got killed and nobody ever attacked anyone else. It's just being imagined. But the imagination is so vivid that it appears to be real.
is happening in imagination. It's not real. Because it's infinite, it can be anything. Now it goes in the ocean, it's being a fish, it's a beautiful goldfish. But then it gets bored of just being a goldfish. Now it wants to be an octopus. Then it says, okay, I've been these different things. Now I want to be a badass barracuda. I want to be a shark. I want to be this thing that everyone's afraid of me. Now I want to be food for this thing. So it can be, it's everything simultaneously in the infinite universe, in other planets, in other places, simultaneously experiencing everything. And if you were, you are this infinite, wouldn't you want to do the same thing? Don't you want to experience everything? Or you have infinite powers and you're going to limit your powers in just the white forces and angels. Oh my God, you're going to be bored after a couple million years. How long do you want to be angels and be the white forces and be the Christ? Don't you want to, uh, don't you want to be Al Capone? Don't you want to be a badass gangster too? Don't you want to experience it all? Why would you want to experience only one aspect of life if you can be everything else? Let me ask you something. How many people know Michael Jordan, who's known as the best basketball player ever lived? Or let's say, who's a very, who's a modern athlete? Let's say Christian Ronaldo or Messi. Okay, football player, right? You guys know Messi? If you can be messy for a day or two or a week, would you want to be messy or not? If you can shift to a different body, how many of you are really super happy with your body? How many of you, if you can change your body, upgrade it right now to a much more stronger, younger, healthy body, how many of you will go for it? D tell me the truth. Don't act like you're cool. If I can upgrade my body to a much more powerful, taller, bigger, faster, younger body right now, I would do it in a second. Why wouldn't I? A 25-year-old body that doesn't have any pains and aches. All I have to do is sleep for four hours. I can go out all night and do whatever I want. Go to bed at two in the morning and wake up at six in the morning, fresh, strong, vibrant. Much better than the old one. Why wouldn't I try that? So if you have the choice to experience, let's say that if they give me a choice to be a woman, Zarathustra, you can be a woman for a week or two. Far out. Of course I'm going to go for it. What is it like to be a woman? I don't know. I've always imagined that. But I've never experienced it directly. Why don't I? Zarathustra, would you like to be a fish for a week? Sure. Would you like to be a bird? Do you want to be able to fly? Who would say no? If I give you an option to be able to fly, who would say no? Who would not want to experience flying? To be a bird, to be a hawk or an eagle or an whatever bird you want to be. So same thing with the absolute, the infinite. We call it, we use the words, the absolute, the infinite, 
Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the Supreme Soul, simultaneously experiencing everything, all of us. That's my answer to your question. Why would God create this world? Because God wants to experience every different angle of this world simultaneously because it can because it's infinite because it's in everything as it is here right now so once you start to switch your consciousness and the way you look at it and once you start to recognize that wow okay Everything I look at, everything that ever existed, it's an expression of the absolute. It's an expression of God, all of it, including myself. Everyone I'm looking at on the streets, anyone that I come in contact with, is an expression of God. That means it's a different expression of myself. It's, it's my own self. I'm always looking at my own self. The evil companies, the corporations, the terrorism, the racist, the good guys, the bad guys, they're all my own self. They're all me. It's me I'm looking at. So how would your life change if you start to look at it that way? Will you still be in this place that you're really frightened Don't you think if you start to recognize that you're only looking at your own self, there's only one here that appears to look like so many different ones, do you think you still will be manipulated? You still will be afraid? You will be afraid of death? You would be afraid of what's going to happen to you? or fear begin to disappear. Here's another angle of looking at things for you to get a better idea that why this world is not real. We talked about the fact that it can hold its to its own structural integrity it cannot save itself the way it is so it's constantly changing from one thing to another if it was 100 percent real it would stay the same all the time it wouldn't change from one thing to another so you could hang on to it but you can't because it's changing so you're trying to hang on to something that doesn't remain the same, including yourself. You're trying to hang on to this that is changing all the time. So no matter what you try to do, it changes from one thing to another. But let's look at things from another point of view. Let me give you another angle of looking at it. And this may help you. What happens to the world that you're so concerned about? Some of you are very, very gone ho very invested in it, really trying to save the planet Earth, the Mother Earth. You're willing to go to war for it. You're willing to go on demonstrations. You're willing to sacrifice so much. You write articles about it. 
you're very passionate because they're destroying the forest, they're killing the animals, they're destroying the land, they're destroying the water, the water is polluted, the air is polluted, and the world is crumbling down and you're very angry about it and you're very identified. But let me ask you a question. When you sleep and you don't dream, when you sleep and you don't dream, where does your world go? What happens to your world when you're sleeping and you're not dreaming? Where does it go? What happens to it? This world that you're so passionate about it, where does it go when you're sleeping and you're not dreaming? Have you ever thought about that? When you're sleeping and you're not dreaming, okay? I'm not talking about when you're dreaming. In psychology, the, uh, they, they broke sleeping into four different levels. The first level of sleep is that when you have the highest level of REM, rap rapid eye movement. When you sleep and you're in this first level of sleeping, what happens is that you have these vivid dreams. You really remember everything. You wake up the next day and you're not really rested because you had lucid dream, dreaming. You were very much involved in dreaming. Everything's very real in it, as if you were there. It really happened to you. Then the second level of sleeping is where you still have the REM is happening, and but you sleep five hours, six hours, eight hours. You wake up the next day. You're not very rested. You know you were dreaming, but you can't remember your dreams. But you know, so you wake up and you forget your dream. You can't remember it, but you were dreaming. When you were dreaming, you knew you were dreaming. And you're still not very rested the next day because there was a lot of activities going on. Then it's the third level that you sleep. There is some level of dreams going on. You're not 100% rested the next day when you wake up. You don't remember your dreams, but you also know that you're not, you weren't rested 100%. You know something was happening, but you can't remember it. But you're not 100% rested. Then you go into the fourth level where the REM is very, very low. There's still rapid eye movement happening, but it's in a very, very low dosage. You put your head down, you sleep. Eight hours after, six hours after, two hours after, or maybe a half an hour nap, you wake up. And you know what you say to yourself normally? You say to yourself, I was gone. Oh my God, I was gone. I was gone. I feel so refreshed. I feel so good. Oh my God, I wish I could always sleep like this because I was gone. So what happens? You put your head down, you put there, you fall asleep. Here is your person you're this person. And then here you go to sleep and there's no dreaming. Here you wake up. So there's this gap. And then the person comes back. You come back with your story, whatever is your story. You're a mom, you're a dad, you're, you're a nurse, you're whatever. 
you're an activist, you're a psychologist, you're a student, you're a truck driver, you're an engineer, whatever is your story. This is your story to this point. From here to here, you slept, and here you wake up and you continue. But you don't remember this part. You slept, and you have no recollection, nothing. You're gone. And in this period of time, it doesn't matter that you have your sweetheart, your lover, husband, wife, whatever is in your arms, that person disappears. They don't exist because you're gone. You have no recollection. You don't remember your home, your bed, your bills, your problems, the pandemic. You're losing your business. You're losing your money. Your partner left you. You don't remember. None of them exist. World issues, demonstration, racism. The world is unfair. Whatever are your issues that you're really struggling with, you're suffering, you're depressed, you're sad, you're angry, you're jealous, or you just accomplished something really big and you're very excited about it, and something very positive happened in your life, and you're super excited. All of these things disappear in this period of time. They don't exist anymore. Because you're not there. Because you don't exist anymore. The world disappears. In your disappearance, you're not there. And there is no world. And then you wake up. And when you wake up, the first thought that arrives, 7 billion people, they report that they live on this planet. 7 billion. All 7 billion people from any race, any religion, any sort of racial colors, any belief system, it doesn't matter. All 7 billion people, when they wake up in the morning, have the same first thought. I don't care who you are. You're a psychologist. You're an engineer. You're in the army. You're a single mom. You're a child. You're a grown up. Whatever you are. You're white, you're black, you're Jewish, you're Muslim, you're Buddhist. I don't care. All 7 billion people, when they wake up, have the first same thought, regardless of anything. Pay attention. It is the I thought. I, oh, I'm tired, or I'm happy, or I feel good, or whatever. I I, me, I. That's the first thought arises in your mind when you wake up. And with that I thought, me comes back your world. It's like all these cubic compartments reappear. You wake up. I I am da 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 da. Just one moment. Can you Instagram we, we ran out of it. We're just uh redoing our Instagram. So one moment you go over here. Right, great. And then just in a moment I don't know what happened to it. So the I thought comes and with the I means an individual separated from everything else comes this imaginary world 
the world of you reappears, which it disappeared in your absence. When you were sleeping and you weren't dreaming, the world of you disappeared. It wasn't there. It didn't exist. Your problems were not there anymore because you weren't there. You have to be there in order to have problems. If you're not there, then who's got the problems? Who's concerned about the world if you're not there? Because you're the one who's concerned about it. You're the one who wants it to change for better. But when you're not there, then who's there? It doesn't exist. So it disappears with you. It appears with you. With your sense of an individual. With your sense of separation. That you're separated from it. It reappears. Examine it for yourself. Don't believe what I'm telling you. I'm just pointing out. Go that direction. Try it. Check it out. Look at it for yourself. Don't just take my word. Please, don't. I don't want you to take my word blindly. I want you to go and examine it for yourself. Discover it for yourself. Realize it for yourself. So it's your own discovery. It's your own realization. I'm just pointing the finger give you an alternative way. That's all I'm doing. But you got to do it on your own. How many times have you awakened in the morning in your life? You wake up, your eyes are open, and you don't remember who you are. Have you ever experienced that? You wake up, and it's like maybe there is a 10 second, 15 seconds, or whatever, that you can't remember who you are. You're trying to, it happened to me a few times. I woke up, and I'm like, where am I? I'm not talking about you wake up in someone else's bed, and you're wondering who the hell are they. I think a lot of times, a lot of us did it in our college days. Like you wake up the next morning, who the hell is this one next to me? Oh my God, what the hell did I do last night? (laughs) Now you wake up and you can't remember your name. It happened to me one time, I don't know, 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds. I couldn't remember my name. I couldn't, I didn't know who I was, but I was right awake. I'm looking at my room, the bedroom, but I can't remember who, and believe me, I had not, I didn't drink the night before. I just can't remember my name. I don't know who I am. Because my consciousness had not identified with an individual person. But I'm awake. I'm alive, I'm awake. Consciousness is here, but it's not identified with somebody, something. And then, yeah, after, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute, or whatever, then I remembered who I was. I wasn't frightened, but I was like, couldn't really find out, couldn't really figure out. And then as I remembered who I am, my world came back. The world with its problems and everything else, it reappeared. So this thing that you're really gone ho and you're really concerned about is not even real.
but you have to experience it on yourself. You can't just brainwash yourself or re replace one spiritual conditioning with another spiritual conditioning and saying, okay, it's not real. So if it's not real, then I'm going to be re irresponsible to the world. I will do whatever I want. I can go to the store and steal and take something I want out of it because it's not real. I don't care. No, in this relative reality, there is consequences. And there is a sense that you have your own free will and you, you operate accordingly to that. That even you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You can't act like, you can act it. That's if you're a responsible person, you're still going to follow your script, being responsible. If you're irresponsible, you're going to be irresponsible because it's already written. Let's just take a moment and kind of sink in, sink into what I was talking about. Let's just take it in before I give you more information. And while you're doing this, I'm just going to read some of the questions have come up and see what's going on. But just kind of stay here. Just come back here. Just kind of chew on what I shared with you. Just kind of absorb it because it's a lot of stuff. And for some of you that you're new to this, it's going to take a little bit of time for it to sink in because this is really off the chart for some of you. It's really like, what? I never, you know, what are you talking about? What planet do you come from? What kind of stuff you've smoked? Just kind of sit with it and just absorb it. See if it makes any sense, if it takes you anywhere, if it resonates with your heart before you reject it or accept it or want to examine it more.
the more you're quiet, the more you learn through whatever system that works for you to go beyond the thinking mind because this is a construct of the thinking mind. The world you're dealing with is made out of thoughts. The building block of it is thoughts. They're building the world, this world that you're in, to build it, they, they, the building blocks are thoughts. They're made out of thoughts. And since thoughts have no substance, they can't hold their structural integrity because it's not real. So it falls apart. And it's constantly changing from one thing to another thing. Okay. The world you live in, including yourself, is made out of thoughts. It's not real. And since thoughts are in flukes, they come and go all the time. They don't stay the same, same as the world you're experiencing. No matter how much you're trying to hang on to it, it doesn't remain the same. It changes. You can see it with, let's say, a relationship. You meet someone and you're really in love with them or whatever, and it doesn't remain the same. It changes to something else. And no matter how hard you're trying to hang on to it, it doesn't remain the same. It shifts to something else. Same thing with your body. No matter how hard you're trying to hang on to things, the hair starts to fall, the wrinkle starts to appear, the body parts starts to malfunction. Yeah, you have it in a perfect way you want it for short periods of time, and then it starts to fall apart. And you're really trying hard to keep it the same, but it doesn't remain the same. Same as your relationship with your kids, with your family, with your friends, to the world, your job, your business. None of them stay the same. They're always changing from one thing to another, maybe for better or maybe for worse. But it doesn't remain the same. Because it can't. Because it's not real. That's why in 5D Quantum Awareness Training Program is the idea is the goal is to take you beyond the world of thoughts into bringing your attention to being silent, being quiet, being still. The transformation from the head to the heart, from a world which is constructed through the mind and its thoughts to the world which is simply is. the presence from what is changing to what is not changing to what is still. So the more you quiet your mind in, in the layman's language, okay, the more you're still and you practice being silent, the more your attention goes towards that which does not change, that which is always here, that which is steady, that which is still. Then the more you connect to that, the more you're getting a glimpse of it, of yourself, your true self, the truth of who you are, the Atman, the Buddha, the master is just sitting here not moving 
It's very still. There's no thoughts here. It's only presence. The more your attention goes in that direction, the more you begin to see the utter world is not real. Because now you're getting a glimpse of what is real. So the other one starts to lose its grip. Because right now you're grabbing you like, got you like this. It's so real that you're choking from it. It creates suffering because it's real. So your attention starts to switch and goes towards that which is not moving. And a part of that is you're disengaging from the world. You're not listening to the news. You're not reading the newspaper. You're starting to sh getting disinterested of it. Not, not living life. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about becoming dull and boring and depressed. I'm not talking about that. You're simply not interested in the samsara, the world. Because it's only what it does, it activates your mind. It's designed to create activation in the mind. Oh my God, now this is happening in the world. Now that is happening in the world. Now from this on, there's a projection through the World Health Organization that 500 million people are going to die in the next pandemic wave, whatever. These are all going to activate your mind. And it keeps you more engaged with the world. So now you remain the slave. You're going through the loop. Then you go do some kind of training, some kind of workshop or whatever in empowerment. It's empowering you so you can create your own reality, so you can manifest your love. Means another food for the mind to get more activated. You're fortifying this illusory identity that you've been invested in by working on it, improving it. So you're going to stay in the loop. You're going to stay in slavery. If you want freedom, you have to disengage yourself from the world of mind. It means you're not interested in what is going on in the world. You don't care about its news. You're not reacting to what is happening. Your partner walks into the room and says, hey, you've been very irresponsible. You don't wash the dishes. You're being an asshole. You don't pick up the kids. You blah, 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 blah. And she throws up all over you. Whether she's right or wrong, you're staying still. You're not reacting to what he, she is dumping on you. You're staying connected. You don't react. You're still, you're quiet. You're not interested in reacting to the world. You're not interested to reacting to your own mind. You're not even interested in reacting to your own emotions. You're not buying it. You're not buying any of it. You're not even by yourself. Whatever is going on in your mind, you're not paying attention to it. Whatever emotions rising and falling, you're not paying any attention to it. You're like, like disinterested. That's the only way. There's no other way. I can't give you a pill to do it. You have to do it yourself. You have to go beyond the mind into silence. So there is no thoughts. 
you're quiet. And the more you're quiet, the more you're connected to this place, the more powerful it gets. It's like a grid. It gets activated to being silent. Silence gets it activated. It fuels the fire, fuels the fire of the heart. You're getting the heart going. You're migrating from the, the mind into the heart, to the being. You're bringing your attention to the being for the first time in your life. You're investing into the being instead of the world of the mind. You stop investing into that world by disconnecting from it. And you're shifting to here. Here is the presence. It's where God lives. This is where Her Majesty lives, right in your heart. So you're bringing your attention to your divine self in the union, reunion with the divine self. You're discovering your soulmate here. The one that always remains with you. The one that the only love that never leaves you, your soulmate, your twin flame, your power source, the heart, the heart of awareness. You're bringing your attention here. And the number one thing starts to happen as your mind is becoming quiet, as this migration is taking place and you're sinking to the heart space, is you start to feel the presence. You begin to feel God. You start to feel the love, the bliss. And it's getting stronger because it's groovy, because it's who you are. And your love affair begins to happen. You're starting this new love affair. You don't know why you're so happy. You don't know why you're feeling this bliss. Out there, there is revolution. People are running around, protesting, breaking things, angry, blah, 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 getting shot at, killing the police, police is killing them, da, 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 da. they're killing each other. You're just having a smile here and you're in complete bliss. You're really blissed out. And you, your love affair begins to happen as if you met a partner, as if you met somebody that you've been waiting for all your life. But this one doesn't leave you. It has no conditions. It's unconditional. And your attention goes in this direction. So you want to be alone. You want to be with this one. You want to be in the groove and you start to feel it. So the grid gets activated an energy force. Power, power source gets activated, starts activating. And the field starts to get stronger and gets more activated and it's surrounding you. And you start to feel the divine presence, the divine love, the truth of who you are. And now there is no room for fear, worry, anxiety. Once in a while, a thought comes, oh, what should I do? What's going to happen to me? And you're just looking at that thought. It's like a bird flying into the sky. but you don't react to it because you're in the groove. You have activated the real fountain of love within yourself. And here, since your attention is here and you're hanging out with the presence, with the self, you start to see that you're needless you begin to see that you're complete. 
you begin to see that you have God in you. Her majesty is within you. It's surrounding you. It's here. And you begin to feel the power. The power of the one. And the connection line starts to get stronger and more integrated. The communication gets stronger, more instant, more powerful. Information is going back and forth. And you begin to see that there is no others. There is no other. It's only you. It's only this. And this is always here. And this is beyond your form. The form can go away, it can die, but you're here. The I am. And you start to see it's always been like that. You remember that, that when you were a child, you knew it. You felt it, you sensed it. Before your mind got conditioned. And then you're grateful to the pandemic. You're really happy that it happened. It had to slow you down. You had to be jobless. You had to be at home. You had to disengage yourself. And you're from the pleasure of senses, from all these things that are distracting you, you had to disconnect from it to come here, to this one, to discover this one, the love affair. And this is all new life. This is a complete different realm. So the more this happens, the higher become your vibration. You start vibrating in a higher frequency. You're vibrating here. And the shit is happening here. The world is going through chaos and whatever is happening is here, but you're vibrating here. You see it from where you're at. You can observe it. They can't see you. And you're living in the same space, but they're not running into each other. It's the same. You're occupying the same space, but this one cannot touch you because you have arisen above it. It's diseases, it's issues, it's whatever issues it is, it doesn't touch you because you're not vibrating here, you're vibrating here. You have ascended to fifth dimensional consciousness, which we're going to have a specific workshop for that in three weeks with specific activations and tools and methods to raise your vibrations to this other level. So we'll get into that too. But that's how you get to it. Being quiet, deactivating the mind and this associating with the samsara, the world of thoughts. I remember back in the day, we were in Lakhna in Indra Nagar with the master, Papaji. And then one day Papaji with his entourage, he went to, to the city. He was living in the outskirts called Indra Nagar. And then he went to Lakhna. And then the next day when he came to Satsang, somebody asked him, Papaji, what were you doing? You went to the city. He said, I went to see I went to the chai place I used to go to. I read the news. I was reading the news, the magazine, stuff like that. It's, he said, I wanted to know what's happening in samsara. I wanted to know what happens in the world. What's going on in the world of illusion? I, wanted, I was curious. What, what are the news? So he went and tapped into it and checked it out and he came back because he was just had no interest in it. 
He was very disinterested. Ramana Maharshi lived from into from the late 18th century till mid 1950s. This was a very strong time in India. Gandhi was living in that time. It was the Second World War. Japanese were threatening to attack India and taking British territory, India. There was a lot going on. And Ramana Maharshi was completely disinterested. If you check him out on YouTube, watch his videos. There's a, lot, a very good series of different videos made by David Godman regarding Ramana Maharshi, Papaji. Ramana Maharshi had no interest, zero interest. He was just hanging out. People were bringing him, coming to him with a lot of fear, worry, anxiety. He just was like, not interested in the world, whatever. Oh, India is going to be attacked. Japanese government taking over. They're attacking southern India. He was like, whatever. Gandhi is going through the movements. Da, 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 da. Don't you want to meet Gandhi? He was like, yeah, if he comes here to visit me, I'll meet him. I have no intention of going anywhere. He was completely disinterested in the world. And that's the attitude you want to have if you want to get free. Otherwise, you're doomed to go downhill into the world of fear and worry and anxiety because it's very real. And there is no liberation in it. You have to find the liberation within yourself. But in order to do that, you have to give something up. You have to discover the truth of who you are. And you are not who you think you are. I'll tell you that. Who you think you are is a false imagination. And you are not that. Who you really are is beyond your imagination. But it doesn't matter what I say and how many times I repeat it. You have to experience it yourself. You have to get a glimpse of it yourself. I can only create the platform and I can only be in this place of transmission, transmitting it as much as I can. The transmission of the wisdom of the truth, but you're the recipient. So it depends how open you are and how willing you are to see it for yourself. But if you get a glimpse of it, then that's the beginning because it's very addictive because it's love, it's the real thing. It's the true love and freedom comes with it. You give yourself a chance to become free forever out of the nightmare. So it's worth it. Since we have nothing to lose. Okay, so let's say if there's any questions. Anybody has any questions either? Okay, yes. Hi, hey, Zuzu. Jen. You Hi. By, are you going by Zuzu? Susanna. Susanna. It was Hi. very short to write. 
Thank you very much. It was really like, like revealing and it gave me a lot of answers today. Um, I have a few questions like uh, this, what you have been describing, it's in Buddhism, like going to Nirvana afterwards. And I want to know, not know, but would it your thoughts on it? It's just comparable, this uh, 5D and Nirvana, because uh, it can take the connection, like the whole life, to get to know the real me. Does it make yeah. sense what I am? Yeah, right. Yeah, the, the 5D, the fifth dimensional consciousness, and the nirvana the same. There are different languages we're using. We're pointing out, and we're pointing out to the same thing. Sure. So uh, it can take like more years or more time to get to know my real me. Uh, do we have the time? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you do because the what happens is when this activation happens and the desire gets really strong and your attention starts to go towards the heart of awareness, okay? It, you, you have to understand that also the force of love, that which has created you, is completely in alignment and is pulling you back in. So I was... time, time, space, it stops because this is beyond time. The mind can't understand it, Susanna. The mind doesn't understand the way of the heart. I was struggling to really get to know me, like in the real way. And uh, everything that I have seen in my visions was uh, a fire. Only fire. Well, uh, and smoke. You... First was a smoke, now it's a fire. Okay. And I don't know if it's just like my ego playing around, the mind is playing around because it's trying to distracting you, of course. So how real is this? How I trusting myself? Like... So what, what do you mean fire, you know? When I'm focusing inwards, right? On me right. in meditation. Right. So first was everywhere was a smoke around me. It was like three weeks ago and 14 days ago was smoke, smoke, smoke around me. It's a vision probably only. My mind, I don't know what is that. Now it's coming to that point that I see a fire all over me. Okay. All over, and then when I try to just examine that, so I'm engaging with my mind, don't I? Does it make sense to you what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let me, let me put it this way. Who is the one to whom do these images appear? Who sees them? Cannot you, identify you, that it's you, You're the one who sees these images, correct? Yeah. They appear to you. And then what happens to them after? They disappear. Well, I'm going somewhere else. I'm going above that. So it's just another image is appearing. Well, let me ask, are they there right now? Do you see them? No, now I see you. Okay. So they appeared and then they disappeared, correct? Yeah. Right. But who stayed? I didn't who? get there. I don't, huh? I don't, okay. I cannot. All right, let me, let me go over this again. You're here and you're the one who's observing, witnessing these images. So you're sitting in silence, you're meditating or whatever. And then all of a sudden you have all these images appearing in front of you, correct? Mm -hmm. And then after they go, 
the one who's observing is still here. Now there is nothing to observe or it's nothingness. Then you come and you're looking at me and we're talking. Now you're observing me. Something else is appearing in front of you. And then it goes away. But who, in all this time, who's remaining the same? You, the observer. I understand. Right. The observer, I understand. Rem the observer remains the observer, correct? Yeah. Keep your attention on the observer, not what it's being observed. Don't get distracted. Keep your attention on you, the one that is aware, but not what she is aware of. If you put your attention on what arises and goes, then you're engaged with the world. Because yeah. again, you're engaged with what comes and goes. If you don't pay attention to that and don't give it any importance and bring your attention to you, the one who's aware, the one who's observing, not what is being observed, then this one doesn't come and go. It's always the same. Keep your attention, keep your focus on that one. Stay still. Okay. Yeah. It's a very thin line there, but uh, yeah. It is, but it's it doable. Yeah. It gets easier as you recognize it. So that's what I talk about. Be silent and be still. Stay still. It means you keep your attention on one pointedness. You're very Zen. You just keep attention on the one who is observing, not what is going in the field, not what's coming and going, but the one who is aware of it. You just keep focused on that one because that one doesn't come and it doesn't go. And then slowly, slowly you get used to keeping your attention on what is still, what, what, what is that which doesn't come and go. You keep your attention on that one. Then the things that come and go start to lose their reality. They start to lose their grip. You start to see them that they're not really real because you're paying attention to that which is real. Before that, you've never done it in your life and you had no reason to do it because always your attention is going outside. Whether it's a thought or it's an emotion, it's still outside of you because you're observing it and then you're reporting it. So no one ever told you, keep your attention on the observer. So this is new. It takes a little bit of time because we're going to decondition a lifetime of con false conditioning. So it's not like it's just going to happen in a second. You need to reprogram yourself. Yeah. Just about okay. practicing, right? Yeah, you practice. But if you want freedom, you have to work on it. If you want to become free, then you have to change your way of perceiving things. Otherwise, you're going to stay in the rut. And it doesn't work. It's not serving you. Obviously, you're here because your old ways don't work for you. So you're looking for a new way to become free. And the new way is to bring your attention inwards. Forget about the images you see. Forget about what you feel. Oh, I see Jesus Christ. I see myself being an Indian. I see myself flying into the sky. It doesn't matter. Those are still images. Don't pay attention to them. Yeah. Bring your attention towards the one that is aware and sees things, not what she is seeing. You keep your attention on that one. Cool. All right? Yeah. Thanks. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. Come back.
By the way, thank you very much for those of you who donated. We do appreciate donations are welcome. I'm very grateful for those of you who donated. We are a small entity and uh, we're not a big venture and we appreciate your support and help. Continue doing your practice. Stay in the presence and stay in your heart. You can tell you're not in presence when your mind takes you away to somewhere else, into the world of worries, anxiety, fear, separation, anger, anticipation. And just bring yourself back. Once you remember, you recognize that, just come back here and sink back inside yourself. And then you will see that all is well. Everything is exactly the way it needs to be. It's very quiet and it's very still in your own center. When you bring your attention back to here and you sink inside yourself, everything in your surrounding becomes quiet. Everything just distance itself from you. And you come back here and you will see and experience that you, you all is very well because you have come to the center of the universe. Nothing is happening here. Nothing is going on here. It's very, very quiet. And that's your sanctuary. This is where you find safety, here, coming back to here. This is where you discover true love. This is where your power resides because you come back into the unity, to the oneness of the being and you rediscover your divinity, you realize you are God, you are one, you are that. And joy, bliss comes back into your life. Everything becomes calm and quiet, as if you're in the middle of the desert by yourself, as if you're in the middle of the ocean and there's nothing going on, there's no news, there's no blah, 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 there's no worries, there's no stories. You come back in the union. You actually have increased your vibrations and you have come to the fifth dimensional vibrational frequency. You have ascended into the oneness. A lot of blessings, much blessings to you, and I look forward to seeing you this coming Wednesday. Namaste.